also left, left it hooked up to the, uh, what's called house steam, which is a stationary boiler that supplied steam to locomotives uh, while they were in the roundhouse. And uh, they didn't check that either. Anyway, so the, the locomotive gradually built up steam while they were gone. And uh, built up enough steam pressure that the locomotive began moving on its own backwards, tender first, headed out the roundhouse and down a, tr a piece of track that used to be over here uh, off to the right in terms oh, of uh, direction of travel. You can see a few uh, pilings sticking up out of the water there. Uh, those pilings, those posts used to support that track. And that's where engine number three went, backwards, untouched by human hands. Uh, so it got to a point up here, and I'll point it out when we get there. Uh, par they're roughly parallel to where we're traveling now. However, they, it begins to converge and cross over ahead of us. Um, the engine going backwards, untouched by human hands, engine number three, hit a device intentionally put there called a derail. The purpose of the derail was to stop the movement of any unauthorized trains, such as engine number three, untouched by human hands, proceeding backwards. So it hit the derail, the derail did its job and turned the engine over into the mud, and it lay there for about six months until Mercer Fraser contractors came out and built a parallel uh, trestle next to where the engine was and hauled it out of the mud. So they got it back on the track and they got it working again and it ran fine for the next 50 or 60 years and uh, went down to Stockton, worked there for a while, finally came back up here and we have it in our collection. You can go see it right now when you get off the train. It's in the boiler shop and you can see some of the original scratches, dings and dents from that accident that nobody's wanted to fix, I guess, or bothered to fix since then. Anyway, that's the story of engine number three. And for those of us here in the orange car, I have a picture of what happened to engine number three. And that occurred, and I'll point it out, the exact location. And you can see, if you look real carefully, you can see the track we're on crossing on the other side of that tower. And the whole purpose of the derail was to prevent it from crossing the other track and possibly running into another train. So there's engine number three. You guys can pass that around. And folks in the yellow car, sorry, you can't see it. But you can go see engine number three over in our collection. And uh, all the details of the accident are explained there. about the vehicle. 
vehicles you're riding in, these are called speeders or crew cars, but they're, they're not called speeders because they're fast. Uh, they can be fast actually if we have the right track, but uh, they're called speeders because they can be put into operation quickly. Back in the day when these were made in the early 1930s, uh, the only other form of getting around on the railroad was a steam locomotive and they were designed really to haul heavy freight, long trains of logs and lumber, uh, but if you needed to run a small errand, you wanted something lightweight and speedy. The steam engine would take three or four hours to get up ahead of steam to where it could operate. A gasoline-powered speeder such as these could be operational at the turn of a, a push of an ignition button. So they were used for a variety of errands. Uh, they would take kids to school, they would take loggers up to the woods, uh, they were used as ambulances, they'd take firefighters up to the woods, any kind of small errand like that, that was what a speeder was for. The orange car is, uh, was built by the Arcata and Mad River Railroad in Corplex in 1933. Uh, it was built with parts on hand that they could easily find. It originally had a Hudson six-cylinder engine in it. It's now powered by a uh, uh, it's Ford, Ford Industrial Flathead six-cylinder. And the folks up here are sitting on it. It's running right now underneath them and it's supplying power to this PA system and the lights uh, and the horn and if there hadn't been a problem with the drivetrain it would be pulling the whole train. And we are about to come up to our the end of our northbound run here. Uh, these tracks continue on around Humboldt Bay uh, through Arcata you may see remnants of them in various places. I'm sure you've seen them along 101. And we're coming to a stop. And then we will proceed in the opposite direction. Ooh, look at that moss pile right there. Oh, that's good. That's a good moss pile. <laughs>